This lesson is about the arithmetic operators, that is, the operators that use one or two values to produce a new value by using add, subtract, multiply, or divide. These look like what you would expect them to look like. If either of the variables on one side of the operator is smaller than an int, it's converted to an int. That is, before the arithmetic operation takes place, a byte, short, or care will be converted to an int. Now, if any variable appearing on one side of the operator is smaller than the variable on the other side of the operator, it will be upgraded and the larger type will be the result of the operation. For example, if one side is an int and the other side is a double, the int is converted to a double and then the operation takes place. There is actually one more operator that belongs to this group, modulo. You probably remember from arithmetic when you were a kid, with division you've got a divisor, a dividend, a quotient, and a remainder. Well, in a regular division, the operation results in the quotient. The modulo operator does the same thing as the division operator, except the result is the remainder. For example, in this operation, if B goes into A exactly, the modulo operation result is zero. There are a couple of other things that you can do with a single plus or minus sign. You can make a constant become a negative number like this. And you can change the sign of a variable this way. If x is positive, this will result in a negative number. And if it's already negative, the result is a positive number. You can also use the plus sign in front of a value like this. It doesn't do anything to the number. But there are places where the code sort of needs it. It needs something like this to make things clear. There are four operators that always confuse people when they first hear of them. They're part of the stuff that Java inherited from C, and some people don't like them. If you don't like them, don't use them. But you need to know what they are and how they work. All they do is either add one to a variable or subtract one from a variable. The following two statements each add one to the variable x. And these two statements subtract one from the variable x. The first two are called the pre-increment and post-increment operators. The second two are the pre-decrement and post-decrement operators. The pre and post versions do the same things, but there is a difference in how they go about doing them. And that difference only shows up if you use them inside an expression of some kind. The best way to show you what I mean is with an example. I've got a program named pre and post that shows you what happens when you use these operators inside an expression. You can see what this program does, and it does it four different times, once for each operator. It sets the value of a to 5 and then displays it. Then it displays the value of the variable as the operator is being applied to it. Finally, it displays the value of the variable after the operation has completed. Here at the top, the first one is the post increment operator. The number is 5 before anything happens. Displaying the value of a while the operator is being applied also shows the same value, the same value in the expression. But after the expression has finished, the value is bumped up by 1. Here is the pre-increment operator. Notice that the change occurs to the value just before the value is used in the expression. The end result is that the last line is the same, but the value of the variable was changed before it was used in the expression. The same situation is true for the post and the pre-decrement operators. Let me give you a word of warning here. If you use one of these operators on a variable, that must be the only place that that variable appears in that statement. If you use it more than once, you don't know what you're liable to get because Java may do things in a different order than you would expect. As a matter of fact, my experience has been that Java always does things in some order that I didn't expect. You can be sure, however, that everything is always settled up and finished at the semicolon at the end of a statement.